Are you serious? Yes, this is How to Kill an Hour. I'm Marcus Bronzy. And me, Funk Butcher. That's right. There's plenty of ways to kill some time out there. Thank you for killing some time with us. You can listen to the show with any type of phone or computer you have at howtokillanhour.com. You can see the things that we speak about on the show at howtokillanhour.com forward slash blog. That's correct. howtokillanhour.com forward slash blog. Hello to Veronica Beatty, Christopher Igor, Jab Lakov, and Bill (laughs) Collier saying hello via the Twitter. That Christoph Igor jab look. It sounds like someone that was in the, the Trump Russia dossier. It sounds like a, a secret agent that the KJB just slipped into. And whilst he was kind of like infiltrating the US elections, he was just listening to How to Kill an Hour show. No, uh, don't, 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 don't listen to him, Igor. <laughs> I, I think the name like jab. Javlokov, that you sound like an Olympic boxer. Yes, you sound like a world champion boxer. <laughs> oh, Javlokov's got you. Uppercut Lokov. Yeah, ja- <laughs> give you the Javlokov. Yeah, that sounds that sounds like a wicked combo. That is good. Left hook, right hook, Javlokov, Javlokov, yeah. Javlokov, yeah. yeah. uppercut, Javlokov. <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely see him in the, the the new rendition of Street Fighter next year or something like that. Oh, you know, it, bro. the character. You cool. know, it's all about that. Shout out also to Factual Management for the Colin First interview. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yep. Um, you can leave a rating and review on iTunes. We left a link in the show description to make it easier for you to do also. Yes, we did. So do that. Click on that link in the description and show us some love. Now, we've got some big news today. Mm. I'm very happy to let you know that How to Kill an Hour, you know, uh, uh, I wanted to play some, some impact music underneath. <laughs> is it? Is that? Is that? Am I overcooking it? Do it. it? If I do Go it, for it. I'm overcooking it, aren't I? Let's cook it. You did so well with that other dramatic music <laughs> that I don't know if I can do, I don't know if I can do dramatic music like you, fuck. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Well, let's, over, let's overcook it. Let's char grill it. You know, like you go to the barbecue and it's just the 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 sausage is black. Yeah, it just it just remains. So we need to overdo this. Yeah, then, overdo yeah? it. Let's let's cook it. Okay then. How to kill an hour? Okay. Yeah, now we're cooking. Has been around for quite a while, over a year, and we've enjoyed bringing excitement to your ears, finding new ways to kill time. And it's come to our attention recently that there's going to be. A podcast festival happening. <sighs> and we have been invited. Tell them, Marcus. Tell them. Tell it's a live em. podcast festival right here in the UK. <sighs> it's called Shout Out Live. And it features a whole heap of fantastic UK podcasts. Can we oh. re-love some of them, fuck? Oh, my God. <sighs> Featuring an original podcast. <laughs> 90s baby show <laughs> how to kill an hour hey! black articulate that's right mostly lit podcast <laughs> melanin millennials hey and another round hey and one of the headliners funk the friend zone coming over here <laughs> <laughs> last speaker's network last speaker networks the friend zone's going to be popping over and yes as well as that yes they're apparently going to be even more headliners that okay. they're going to be announcing from this point onwards. Amazing. So in early April, we will yeah. be finding out who the other headliners were. We overcooked that, innit? Yeah. But you know what? Fuck it. It's good. Why not? Some people like their meat well done. Uh, hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey. So yeah, I mean, the friend zone, Melanie yeah. Millennials, Mostly yeah. Lit, uh, Grime Daily's Hashtag TBC podcast, uh, another round, the unoriginal podcast, Black Ticulate, mm-hmm. 90s, mm-hmm. Pink Matter, mm-hmm. 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 and us here. How to Kill an Hour will be down there on the day. Um, if you're a podcast super fan, this is this fan, this is an event for you. We've got uh, Two Fools Talking, uh, they're going to be hosting on the day, yep. and the Friend Zone, like I said. Uh, mm-hmm. Not to mention, you'll be able to discover all of the other podcasts that I mentioned. There'll be talks on the day, yeah. seminars, stuff yep. like that. Yeah. When is it going to be, and how can you get tickets? Well, get your tickets by going to so live festival.com mm-hmm. that's so live festival.com uh, and the event is going to be on the 5th of august 2017 yes what please day is that I mark that in your calendar i need to i need to check my google calendar you know <laughs> what day is that i think that's a, that's a saturday i think it's a saturday yeah it's a saturday okay saturday the 5th 
of August 2017. It's going to be a lot, man. Um, and yeah, get your tickets now. So yes. livefestival.com. It's going to be at Bedford Way, Russell Square in London. So get at your boss, your manager, whoever, book that annual leave. Yeah, get that time off if you work a Saturday. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah man. And uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's hey, there's, there's limited tickets starting from 20 quid if you head over to solivefestival.com. Which is cheap as chips in these uh, times of austerity. Yeah, they've also got some VIP <coughs> tickets as well. VIP. What do you get from the VIP? That's what I'm, I'm just clicking this now. VIP. Do you, do you get to touch me? You get to. Do you get to touch the funk butcher? You get to. Get, you get a piece of the funk. Yeah. I think you get. You get ten minutes with the funk. You get a strand of my hair. <laughs> <laughs> you got kind of short hair up top and a kind I of trim. So when you say a strand, where's that strand going to come from? It's short and curly. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, check that out, man. And like I said, soulifefestival.com to get your hands on the tickets and all information about what tickets you can get, when, where. Uh, we'll obviously put links to it in the show description. Another very interesting thing that I think we should touch up on today, Funk, mm-hmm. is there's a website called The Nation of Billions. Yes. And it's home to a lot of very interesting content. Mm-hmm. And you recently put an article up there, didn't yeah. you? Now, I, I, usually, I'd, I'm not going to lie to you, listener. I'd be like, oh, Funk, what's on there? Because I've already read it. But I yeah. genuinely haven't had time to read it because it only came up yesterday. And yeah. I was on the website too early because it yeah. came out after midday Yeah, on the day I was looking at it. So, first of all... Uh, how did this 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 article come around? Well, this article is obviously just been a progression from the topic we spoke about last year um, about my uh, personal fight mm-hmm. um, to s- see about some sort of change, some sort of attitude change in what's going on with the youth violence situation here in the, I wouldn't even say the capital, in the whole of the UK because yeah. this, this is a kind of like a pandemic. It's up and down the country. They're experiencing the same problems. And this article was a precursor to a larger debate about how music can provide some sort of answer to the problem. Um, the website, a little bit back on about the website, the website is a website owned by DJ Semtex, shout out to DJ Semtex yeah. of BBC Radio 1, and it's called Nation of Billions. And basically it is kind of like a real um, music purist website. They talk about all different aspects of music uh, uh, circulating around the hip hop and UK urban music genres, but they also touch on topics to do with music such as this. So I was afforded the opportunity to kind of expand on this problem. And the reason why I phrased it in this kind of the, the question of can music solve our youth violence problems is um, just building the case that in a lot of kind of newspapers with a kind of more of a, a, a that kind of lean to the right um, politically, they tend to blame music for the the problems of the youth and the attitudes and the and the behavioural problems which have kind of causing this the, the 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 spate of violence that we've seen over recent years. Mm. And my take is the way that if music can be seen as a negative. Um, influence then surely it can have the power to have a positive influence i mean influence can be used both ways so it's just kind of shedding a light a beacon on the positives that music can obviously um um, uh, kind of generate and then from that point onwards readdressing the balance that is currently out there i'm very cynical of the kind of the music industry i've been a part of it for close to 15 years and i've seen that some large institutions benefit from the negative aspects being perpetuated because it um, props up their market base and it they have no real vested interest in the message, just in the the kind of maintaining the flow of people and the audience buying their products or whatsoever. Now is a time to kind of concentrate on the messages kind of being um purported and perpetuated out there so there's um in the article i touched on um briefly that there's think tanks out there. there's a think tank called uh signify which is run by ben ryan shouts to ben ryan and they've done some amazing research about the way um uh black and ethnic minority people are represented represented within popular culture and media and the problems 
based on the kind of the, the imbalance based on uh, the, the, the the kind of media that's currently out there so again it's not about a a me leading the charge to censor anyone i'm not trying to get everyone to kind of make gospel music here, out here or anything <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally trying to create a balance whereby um, the side of music which is underrepresented, underrepresented, if I can get out there, um, the side which shows a more positive light, the, sh- the side that shows a more um, realistic and um, aspirational way of these young people achieving their goals, which doesn't involve violence, that being pushed out there to the forefront so had some interesting conversations um yesterday um with uh, uh a young woman uh called Hodge who currently works with the the mayor's office as well and there's going to be some interesting meetings i'm excited about leading up to uh in in the new year about how we can take this forward this is just the, the precursor kind of thing um started off last year where I started the dialogue with the Scotland Yard and just kind of informing them of what I was on and what I was about and how I wanted to kind of make this a holistic approach involved the the bereaved uh, families, the police, the teachers, the government, everyone collectively involved and how music can play a part in in um in changing those attitudes. And again, this my involvement is not to assume that music is responsible. It's a way to say that music can be an aid. Mm. And I just wanted to reinforce that because a lot of people feel like once you've put music in with youth violence, you automatically associate that music is assuming a position of we have to do something because we're responsible for it. No, not at all. It's just we, we're doing something because we feel like we have an obligation to do something about it. Mm. Musicians, uh, DJs, artists, producers, whoever, our main target audience is that generation, is that demographic which are hurting each other. So it would feel wrong not to have a vested interest in their well-being. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. How was your, how was the feedback on social media? The feedback on social media, um, it was interesting. The initial feedback came from obviously um, people that had been affected, those who are concerned, those who already had a history within um the the field of kind of uh youth violence or social work or whatever the music community were very tentative at first um and i expected that as a musician i expected that because they are associated with certain brands and whatnot their ability sometimes to be forthcoming and and forthright about certain issues isn't going to be as apparent as someone who is completely freelance and has no ties to any of these organizations so it wasn't like a complete shock to me it just means that from our end the people who are kind of campaigning for this kind of 24 7 we just need to build that momentum um even more so that the whole movement becomes undeniable and then you have to involve yourself in the conversation Mm. so do you think it's going to be a situation like, cause I know there are people out there thinking, Oh fuck, you're such an idealist, you know, kumbaya around the campfire. Yeah, yeah. But I don't feel like that's your message. I feel like yours is just more like, look, yeah, a lightsaber. This is me trying to be as clever as I can, but yeah. a lightsaber can be used by a Sith master. Yep. Or it can be used by a Jedi Knight. Exactly. And you're trying to say music is the, is the lightsaber. Exactly. You just want it to be handled by the person with the right intentions. Yeah. Exactly. And we've got the blue lightsaber because right now the lightsaber that's being perpetuated is the red one. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, man. So. Well, it's, it's, I, I look forward to reading the article. It's, it's a nice, interesting take on an age old, well, I feel like it's an age old yeah. subject because it's been, you know, it's been around ever since I was, I've, I've been on the earth. So yeah. it's a yeah. very interesting subject yeah. that, you know, it's worth digging into and we'll put the link to this yeah. in the show description for how to kill an hour. And, um, I think that will wrap up this sort of mini sode of how to kill an hour where, you know, we've let, let you know about two positive things, you know, a great article, which is going to spawn some very interesting things mm-hmm. and, and how to kill an hour live. Yes. Live hey, in the flesh. Hey, I'm here in 3d. Yeah. So it'll be, uh, myself, Funk Butcher and Nick Bright will be down there. 
Yes. And more details on what we'll be getting up to on the day will be flying at you shortly. And of course, in that live capacity, I'll be reminding everyone, including Nick, how I beat him at Street Fighter <laughs> on the Nintendo Switch. So, yes. <laughs> I messed you up. <laughs> I messed you up, though. Do you know what? I'm not going to lie. I played Funk and beat him. I got off that Nintendo Switch <laughs> ASAP. You ran. I was like, I want those. Listen, I've been holding victories on consoles for years with that tactic. Win once, leave. <laughs> I, th- I think I, I, I was gunning somebody about Pro Evolution Soccer or FIFA for like three yeah. years. Well, that's coming on the Switch soon, the, yeah. the FIFA version. Let's so, do this. Yeah. Yeah. Because what I'll do is I'll whoop your ass quick and then I'll be like, nah, I've got to go somewhere. But then whenever there's banner, I'll be like, remember that time I beat you though? Oh, come on, let's play now. Oh, nah, sorry, I've got to go. <laughs> got to get out of here. Anyway, there's plenty of ways to kill some time out there. Thank you for killing some time with us. He's been Funk Butcher. He's been Marcus Bronzy. Stay blessed. Peace.